So for those of you who follow the newsletter, you probably saw this about Rhino Linux. The very first stable version has been released. There used to be a Linux distribution called Rolling Rhino. It was discontinued just last year, teasing this project that just came out on stable. Rhino Linux is a rolling release distribution, so it's coming out with updates all the time. They have their very own derivative of XFCE called the Unicorn Desktop, which we will be checking out. Why Rhino Linux? Apparently they also have their very own pack stall at the very heart of the distribution providing essential packages such as the Linux kernel, Firefox, and more. They have some custom things such as their setup wizard, your system tools, Rhino package, and Rhino drop. And just overall, it looks like a very clean system. It looks like your standard GNOME Ubuntu, but apparently it's based on XFCE. So I downloaded it and let's fire it up in a virtual machine. And we're in, so I'm going to do my very best to try to ignore everything except for the installer here. I did, however, see a little U-Launcher prompt, so that's cool, that's the uh, default. We have Calamaris, or not default, just an option for launching applications. So let's go through Rhino, Linux, Ubuntu-based distro, Packstall, and XFCE at the core. So let's go ahead and continue there. And this is a pretty standard process, I'm not going to bore you with all the specific details. We're gonna name the computer Rhino VM and then proceed on next, install, install now. And while it installs, I get to tell you about our uh, sponsor, sponsored part of this video, we have Linode, or specifically creating a Linode on Akamai Connected Cloud. I'm currently using them for a lot of the backend services for my website. You can easily use them to spin up a wide variety of Linux servers, picking from a bunch of different Linux distributions, or you could use something from their marketplace to get a specific website, game server, whatever it is, up and running with ease. And if you use that link down below, for new users, you get a $100 60 day credit. I think I read through that too quick. I'm only at 8%. <laughs> there we go, now we're done. Let's go ahead and restart our system and then we could start diving into some of their uh, specific features. So let's hit done. I will say I love like that logo that just popped up graphically and design choices are very top notch. Purple is my favorite color. All right, let's log on in here, bam. And U Launcher, it's set to Super F, so let's start with that. I've uh, made my very own U Launcher theme at one point. I haven't updated it in forever, but there's U Launcher, and this is whatever theme they're rocking. So if we wanted to open up something such as settings, we could see a lot of the XFCE stuff, settings editor, settings manager, bunch of different stuff. We go to the settings manager, we get kind of like the uh, really old school, like Windows 7-esque uh, control panel here, which I really like. I do like the theme they're using, all that, but all the appearance crap is more like personal preference, doesn't really matter too much. Now, over here we have the search bar, which is U Launcher. We have the application grid. So here's a good layout of just about everything. One, they include MPV, which is my preferred over something like VLC. We have your system. So that's one of their things. So let's go ahead and open that up. Here we go. You can see I'm in VMware at the moment. See our system information. If I click on system upgrade here, it's going to search for an update for us, which it does look like. And I do like whatever uh, package thing they're using. What was it called? I forgot. It was like pack something, but it looks really good. Kind of reminds me of a uh, Nala or the uh, kind of APT front end replacement thing that you could get on Ubuntu systems. So finished. Pack stall. That's what it is. It's telling me right there. It's automatically picking a lot of uh, various user prompts for me. You could see it said no to do I want to save and view. At least through their little uh, updater here, it's trying to keep my need to interfere with it, at least not part of the equation. Now this is really weird, zero, one, two, three, and then those are kind of filling up. And there we go. And Linux modules 4 point, or 6.4.9, so it's running a very new version of the kernel. And info, performing post-install operations, cleaning up, info done, installing Firefox. So that's a pretty cool little thing going on. Let's uh, go back into our grid here and open up a terminal. And oh, we got a lot of different options. Terminal emulator, Xterm, UX term, XFCE terminal. Let's go to terminal emulators here. Rhino PKG, <laughs> okay. There we go. All right, let's check out this package manager, see what's going on here. Make this a little bigger for us. Da da. oh, dun. Ignore me, I've been trying to use uh, this mouse. I've been using it for a while. I'm still not 100% used to it. So, let's see. Execution, install foobar. Packages found matching foobar. So install, remove, search, update. Okay, that's pretty normal. We have help to display this page. This is in fact the help page. Flags, input, and example execution. 
Rhino PKG install, what should we grab? Let's grab GIMP. GIMP has a version of on basically everything. So enter, searching backstall. Oh, we have a lot of options. This looks like, a, it looks like our only options are going to be apt, which I do know there is a flat pack. I wonder if it's enabled, but if I want to select one, we'll go with the very first one. One, uh, sure. And there we go, auto removing, Linux headers, so oh, fun. So we got our little download prompt, our install prompt. Let's try something else. Let's try uh, Caden Live. Only two options, okay. Oh, I'm an idiot. I installed the data. I assume. All right, now if I go to this, there we are. You have a couple things missing, but that, that's okay. There we go. And it's fitting really well with the uh, XFCE kind of theming going on here. So that's nice. So interesting package manager. I got some learning to do in that regard. Like I, in the title of this video, this is a first look. So this is my first time playing around with this. From there, we have Xterm Workspaces Window Manager Tweaks. We have both web browser and Firefox stables. Let's see. Oh, okay. That would have just been a link to this, which is fine. Task manager, let's see how much we're using out of the gate here. CPU's at 2%, memory is at 19% or 1.5 gigs, which is pretty standard for a Ubuntu install. Other than that, we have a plank, which is the bar on the side there. If I open that up, it'd probably open up the settings maybe. There it is, so this is the dock. Rhino plank is the theme. Position left, looking beautiful. And now this doesn't want to close. Okay, display, default application. Nothing else is really looking too unique. We have whatever this is. Login, Dropbox. So this might be their little, uh, here, let's go over here. And if I go to home real quick, we saw this, Rhino Drop. Rhino Drop allows you to effort, effort, effort it, Esli. Send files across devices connected to your local network or Rhino Drop stores, so on and so forth. So we have uh, some options here. I don't think this is Rhino Drop. Rhino. I mean, it might be. I'm not seeing Rhino Drop, but this looks like what it might be. Go to Rhino Drop. Oh, is it their own, like, off site thing? I mean, if people actually start using this a lot, that's going to get really expensive on the server. A sane desktop, perfect for developers, which looks like by that they mean they pre installed VS Codium for you, which, I mean, is a fine option. Personally, I like to put my uh, VS Codium in a Docker container on my local server. That is a fun thing to do. Let's learn more about their same desktop. FXE becomes modern, which I actually do have to admit they've done pretty well here in that regard. Ooh, it's gonna hide my little dock. Take control with U-Launcher. Beautiful desktop grid and a whole new dashboard. And I think they're referring to their like desktop switcher here. So if I tap on this, I mean, this is pretty nice. We have our various desktops here. So I tap on that, it closes right away. Firefox stable is one thing I have open. If I'm to click on this, it takes me or it reopens. Is that what happened? Oh, it just reopened it in here. So if I click it again, it's just gonna reopen it again. Okay, so that's what that does. Rhino Linux, they have a wiki. Whoop. And installation guide, quick start, post install, tools used in Rhino. So Packstall and Rhino PKG are two different things. So here's what we're playing with. We have our install, search, help flags and all that. We're kind of playing around and failing at that. Packstall, what is this? Ooh, it's a third party tool. Okay, nice. The AUR for Ubuntu. Why have I not heard of this? Packstall i NeoFetch. Browse packages. Oh, so they got a lot of stuff in here. But I am not seeing zero AD. Usually zero AD is the very first thing on everything. Any desk, awesome, get, bet. But it's in all the other repositories, so it's not really needed in here, I guess. Bitwarden, Blender. Should we use this to try to build Blender from source? Hopefully that doesn't take forever. Let's fire it open. And paste. Do I need sudo? We're gonna find out. Do I wanna view edit the pack script? Sure, let's check it out. Select an editor, nano, it's definitely the easiest. Ooh, so this is what it's gonna do, make directories, all that. that that's a really cool option to be able to do that. AUR helpers probably have this, but it doesn't throw it in your face like that where you can actually see exactly what it's going to do with this little script. Cause that's what AUR really is, is a lot of scripts. That's why like the DaVinci Resolve in the AUR is what I use a lot of the times because it's scripted out to install properly. But yeah, let's type in our password, bam. Nope. Okay. 404 not found. That's wonderful. Yep. Sad day. Btop bin. Is this going to give me the same problem? Whoa, Whoa I took a screenshot. Btop bin. 
No, I'm fine. There we go. This one's downloading. B top. And it's done. B top. That worked really good. That's weird. That's the second time I've been trying to demo a quick install and it failed and then worked. Fail work, fail work. I love BTOP. I have a little like server display where on my Intel Nook I just have that display. I have BTOP open all the time, like on the bottom of my server. Looks really pretty. But yeah, pack install, pre installed, that's pretty cool. So it's like Ubuntu that's trying to be Arch. At least that's the general vibe I'm getting. It's an Ubuntu that wants to be Arch. Which I, I mean, you can't really blame them, can you? The real question, the realest and most important question. Nice. With all that, this is pretty cool. It's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of distributions out there. And there are a couple rolling release Ubuntu distributions. We have Vanilla OS, Blend OS, I think. But they're all trying to be containerized things. This is trying to be Arch, which, I mean, yeah, okay. If you're interested in learning more or trying this out for yourself, I will leave a link down below. One really cool thing about it is if we do go over to download here, select your edition. We have Pine64 and Raspberry Pi editions. We have the generic ISO for Arch64 as well as x86. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.